Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 career mode here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we are headed to the Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway. You notice the playoff grid, but behind that, look at the paint scheme. Clemson Tigers uh, is, is a paint scheme uh, made by uh, D-Money that I, well, right off the bat say I'm not a football fan, not a college football fan either, um, but he made this for me to run specifically at Darlington, so I am running it. So if you're not a fan of this team, don't go after me. I don't even know anything about them other than the fact that they're orange. But yeah, we're going to be running these orange, uh, purple, and white colors. Let me know your favorite college football team, though, down below. Uh, as as a Canadian, don't really have much interest in college football. Of course, it is it is an American sport. Uh, we have NFL, of course, uh, is actually, you might not realize that NFL is massive in Canada. Uh, nearly as big as hockey. Uh, but we actually come into this weekend, we had a sponsorship announcement here. Razor is partnering with Colleague and Hendrick Motorsports. So, Myself and William Byron will be running Razor Paint Schemes in Charlotte for the Coca-Cola 600 in the next episode. These were made by Sanok. Uh, if I remember correctly, he told me that these were based off of a concept uh, that Lefty Designs, who is very popular in the NASCAR designing community, he actually made uh, a concept of cars and then Sanok kind of went off of his concept and made these Razor cars here. Now, as we were in practice making some errors right off the bat, getting a Darlington stripe off the outside wall here now, uh, but Darlington a long lengthy race it's kind of all about patience just got to be calm cool got to be collected uh, and make as little mistakes as possible here but I was pretty happy with how the car had drove in practice so I was pretty confident going into qualifying probably a top 25 effort uh, we're gonna get out of this car here was my four practice laps here the first one being the worst and then we of course had a dramatic improvement on lap two by eight tenths of a second uh, as the other two laps are in within uh, a couple of tenths of a second of each other so here we are in qualifying in Darlington for the Southern 500 now we've continued to see an interesting season develop uh, new winners recently of course and uh, that's not really helpful uh, for our situation but I am still hopeful still early in the season we're about what halfway through the regular season there so plenty of time to go still of course and we have a big race in the next episode coming up with Charlotte and the Coke 600 because that is a four stage race so obviously another opportunity for stage points that we probably won't get in this four star car for a colleague racing out of turn four though down this front straight away a goal of a 29.965 not going to be reached about a tenth of a second off with a 30.066 that puts us P22 in Darlington overall I'm not too disappointed with that tier felt like that's about where we belong with this car for qualifying you can see the cars around us in where they uh, have qualified here. Now Carson Hosevar still in for uh, Ricky Seno Jr. Jimmy Johnson in the field tonight. 36th place in qualifying there with Hosevar being P30. Rounding on the top 20 was Chase Briscoe. Gibbs there P17. Top 10 uh, being rounded out by Bubba Wallace Larson just behind him. But the front row, Christopher Bell, who's been so strong this season in qualifying with Ross Chastain on the front row. Now before we go racing for the Southern 500, we had Trucks and Xfinity as well racing this weekend. So we'll take a Look at the truck series finishing order here from Texas. Chase Purdy picked up his third win of the season. Uh, Zane Smith leading the standings actually, but winless this season. So he's been dominant, but he just hasn't found a way to victory lane yet. The Xfinity series as well, uh, joining the Cup series here in Darlington. Cole Custer picking up another win this season as it's been a very good season for him as well. Uh, and of course, this season pushed back down to the Xfinity series after getting the boot from the 41 Cup car for Brian Priest. That wrap it up for the recaps let's get ready to go racing for the southern 500. welcome race fans to the southern 500 we don't have a throwback weekend but we do have a track with lots of history and character what does it take to be successful here clint i ain't got a damn clue chris i never won one of these well, what do you think tony it's really about being patient but on the limit at the same time you have to keep care of your stuff from start to finish and it's a long grueling race We're ready to roll in Darlington, but while we have Tony Stewart here, Tony, we all want to know why put Harrison Burton in the 10 car next year? Honestly, Mike, we've seen a lot of potential from his Xfinity days in the 20 car, and we still see it now while he's in the 21. Obviously, money plays a role sometimes, and he's simply bringing more funding, 
than Smithfield and Eric want to bring next year. All right, bud, your first cup race here. It'll be tough. Just keep it clean. Yes, sir. I'll try my best. Uh, let's have fun tonight. You hear the radio. You heard the reasoning. Finally, uh, from Tony Stewart, while uh, Harrison Burton's getting uh, the call up, you see three drivers starting from the back, Jose Bar McDowell and Suarez. We're ready to roll for the Southern 500, which is now underway. We are green flag racing here from 21st starting position. Christopher Bell leads the field down towards turn one, but we cannot, of course, rule out Chastain, who starts on that front row. Of course, two wins on the season already for Chastain. Bell has been looking for that second win uh, several times already. He's been so close but just hasn't been able to close these races out good tonight be the night here now and what is a track where we've seen that 20 car of course uh, go to victory lane uh in the past at darlington but it was eric jones behind the wheel for joe gibbs racing uh multiple years ago now as we exit turn for the inside of ty gibbs fellow rookie of course and ty gibbs uh is going to be getting stronger and stronger if we look at the recent trends of the last few races here now as i kind of cut the nose off there of my teammate of uh, justin haley sliding up the track my other teammate there of chandler smith in the 13 car he's got a few more races in this car before once again we see uh our other teammate of aj allmendinger back in that car so uh them two of course continue to split that ride we might as well see daniel hemrick uh, in the 13 car soon uh so yeah we're gonna have of course seeing this whole season split between those three specifically hemrick allmendinger as well as chandler smith there we go up the inside of harrison burton of course we got the little pep talk from our crew chief there stevie speed the beginning uh just keep it clean you know that's the goal here today as we were now passing my teammate of chandler smith who was really struggling on pace and him struggling on sp uh, pace would actually hold up a lot of cars behind myself uh, and would allow me to open up a nice gap to 22nd place here now as i was trying to run down kurt bush who was fading early on here in the evening now as you can see him falling back to 20th place alex bowman now in front of him chastain actually out to the lead so bell might have started on pole but not quite showing the pace here now as i'm up the inside of that 67 just behind us eric Gal Morola had now run us down, so it was going to get interesting here, clearing Kurt Busch on lap 8 into turn 3, uh, but Almarola would be all over me and well, would be up my inside by the time we went into turn 3 on lap 10, so uh, we gained a spot on Kurt, we lose a spot to Eric, and the 17 and the 99 with the next two cars behind us that were kind of closing the gap, but the 99 a lot quicker. He got past Busher, myself and Almarola had run down both Kyle Busch as well as Chase Briscoe, and then kind of got stuck, and then Daniel Suarez is going to come up into the mix. Suarez has been on fire uh, recently, of course, with the domination speed in Dover. He went and took the lead, crashed, and then fought his way back through the field uh, in what was a wild race and managed to still win it now as we were up the inside here following the 10 of Almarola through some traffic getting past Kyle Busch who's having a bit of a slow night so far to start uh, and we would also get up the inside of the 14 of Briscoe. Chase Elliott now to the lead here a little past halfway in stage one as well they were uh, coming up on lap traffic they're up in the front as uh, here comes now my inside this was unexpected in his second ever cup start Carson Hosevar on the 47 running better than what uh, Stan Knows is usually able to do so a great night so far for Carson Hosevar as that comes to an end right in front of us he goes crashing there blows the tire we're involved we're gonna get a little bit of damage out of it but not gonna be as bad as the 47 as Hosevar blows a rear tire and will now be out of the race so just as he made a pass for 20th having a really solid run for that car's standards he crashes out and it's over Really unfortunate there, uh, as it sounds like he will also be in the car, by the way, for the next race. Uh, so he will likely get one more race at the Coke 600 before Senos comes back into the 47. Everybody's into the pits here. Uh, four tires feel as well, and we're going to get ready to roll. We lost three positions because we had to spend a couple extra seconds there repairing damage. Uh, but not too bad. Certainly not as bad as it could have been. Kyle Busch not rolling up the restarts. So we might lose even more time. Hosevar in the pit lane for the rest of the race. He is out. Jimmy Johnson in his second race of the season since the Daytona 500, of course, was his first one. Uh, he's up here towards the top 25. Now, Kyle Busch jumps up to the top right there in front of his brother of Kurt Busch. Of course, Kurt already announcing retirement at the end of the season. We've got two big names calling it a career at the end of this 2023 season. The one we're beside, Kurt Busch as well, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr. still up in the 
Air, Eric Almarola has decided obviously he will return. However, it will be with a new team, the 21 car. And I can tell you, Almarola, it's looking like basically a one season kind of deal. He's only signed a one year contract with Wood Brothers Racing. I would highly expect Almarola to hang up the helmet at the end of that 2024 season uh, with Wood Brothers Racing now. Uh, as you can see, Elliott out in the lead with three to go. In the stage up the inside again, Kyle Busch here. Definitely got good pace in this car. Uh, it's just about trying to uh, patiently find that track position. As you can see us getting past the eight, now closing in on the back of the 14, this being the final lap of stage number one. Going to the inside here, we're gonna try and do almost a, a slide jump, you could call it, down into turn three. Elliott exits turn four. We're gonna pull a slider on this 14, get up in front of him, clear for P21. That's where we're gonna end stage one as Elliott crosses the stripe to get the stage victory here in Darlington. 10th place crosses, it brings out the caution, of course. So P21 in stage one, not too bad, uh, but we definitely, what is building my confidence is I know we have more pace than P21. So we're going to come in uh, and put four tires on. Is How about Ty Gibbs up in the third? Larson uh, having a solid run. Uh, Reddick having a, a solid run as well as him and Gibbs, both further down the order in the points that need some good fortune. Martin Truex Jr., an example of someone that's had a lot of speed this season, but a lot of bad luck. He ends up P11 in stage one. Can Truex finally uh, turn things around here in Darlington? Having a decent run so far. Uh, as you see, we gained one spot in the pit lane. Unfortunately, that will put us up to the top, so I'd rather have not gained anything, to be honest there, in the pits. But we're going to be, nonetheless, back underway alongside that ally financial Chevrolet of Alex Bowman here. Bowman, another driver that's had an interesting season so far. He's in that playoff area, uh, but obviously not as strong as his other Hendrick teammates. 200 cars have gone to victory lane this season. William Byron, Chase Elliott, uh, and Chase, uh, stays stage one winner of Chase Elliott, of course, looking very strong tonight. Larson has a lot of speed, and he's kind of in this table of what we'll call uh, unlucky drivers. There's three drivers that I'm kind of considering to have a lot of bad luck so far this season. Martin Truex Jr., the obvious one. A lot of speed, but a lot of issues. Uh, Daniel Suarez has had decent speed and quite a few issues. Kyle Larson's had a lot of speed, and he's had his fair share uh, of just rough finishes when he's had really quick pace. Now, as you saw myself get into the back of Kurt Busch, he's going to go for a big slide. We avoid contact for the second time. He saves it. Everybody saves it. We keep on going. That was just an awkward moment there. That was all on me, but fortunately uh, we keep it going in the right direction, and so does the 67 of Kurt Busch now. So P25, trying to recover from that. We go up the inside of Corey LaJoy. will pass him for 24th. Jimmy Johnson being our next target to overtake here in 23rd place. We would run him down uh, pretty easily here, but uh, honestly a decent run uh, for Jimmy Johnson who of course in real life has a track record of doing races this year not finishing uh, So hopefully we see Jimmy Johnson at least finish this race as we're gonna go uh, and look up the inside of the seven-time Cup Series champion And this Clemson Tigers it is Tigers right correct me if I'm wrong I'm pretty sure it's the Clemson Tigers though Nonetheless uh, we exit turn four and clear of the 84 with now well over 15 laps to go still in stage number two now Closing in on the 14 of Briscoe. Smoke up ahead, though, as we head down into turn one. It's the 19. It's Martin Truex Jr. who is having a solid run again. And there it is. He's going to be out. I talked about it. The bad luck continues there as we have a bit of a moment with the 14. But it's going to be night over for Truex. Heartbreak there as we are going to get uh, an interview, actually. A mid-race interview with them here momentarily at the end of the stage. But heartbreak for Martin Truex Jr. Uh, as we would continue on. So we passed Briscoe, now passing Kyle Busch. And man, that I cannot believe that how that season has turned out so far for the 19. Look at the track map. Ty Gibbs had passed Chase Elliott, and then Elliott had actually passed him back, crash, in turn three. It's Jimmy Johnson, who's gone around hard into the outside while the caution will fly his rear tire blue. That was actually uh, turn one where he crashed, so unfortunate uh, for the 84 of Jimmy Johnson. It's going to be night over there, so I kind of jinxed him. Uh, we gain or lose nothing, so we stay P20 here for the restart, and just like stage one, it's going to be a late start, or late restart, I should say, now as we're backing away from P20 alongside that 17 of Chris Busher. A bit of a slow launch for myself there. You see the gap uh, that's left between myself and the 48. Ty Gibbs out in front, and now I'm like, oh god, I hope he does not have the speed to win this race because a new winner is just 
quite simply not what we need but if he keeps running like he is he might be able to point his way into the playoffs nonetheless he's just gonna have a lot of work to do of course but fortunately it's still early in the regular season you got a lot of time to make up a big points deficit and I expect to see him Truex Reddick as well those three drivers specifically to make up a lot of points if they can just avoid some bad luck uh, Reddick's another one that's had a lot of speed but it's had some bad luck actually now problems up ahead it looks like Chase Elliott had contact with Ty Gibbs that slowed up everybody I'm down on the apron coming back up on the track contact with with the uh, McDowell and that's gonna bring out a yellow as Cindric gets hard into the outside wall and things are kicking off here in Darlington that was me not realizing we were three wide when the chaos had concluded and I was just coming up the track thinking McDowell was going to glide over towards the wall now look what happened up front Elliot contact for the lead with Ty Gibbs uh, he saves it but that causes a huge stack up and then I just said no idea we were three uh, so that was all on me uh, nobody would pit that would end stage number two. So Ty Gibbs wins stage two. And as we're going to go back racing, we actually get a brief chat with Martin Truex Jr. Martin, Martin what, went what went wrong with the car? With the car? I, got I got no, no idea. idea. Just, just broke. broke. Starting, starting to get tired of this How does, How does a season, season like, like this affect our decision on retirement? On retirement? Uh, don't know. I don't care. We're going to win races this year. That's all I do know. A little fire out of Martin Truex Jr. there now as we are back underway uh, here in stage three. As you see me getting on or off the throttle there, trying to get in behind the 34 Loves machine of Michael McDowell. I swear, you know what? You got to give a big shout out to Loves Truck Stop as they have sponsored that team for years among, uh, you know, the ups and downs of that team. And they have really stuck it out now as we continue, though. Uh, just a little, little, uh, little over 30 laps to go behind the 17 of Chris Busher. Nat fast and all Ford must a driver that we know we're going to be battling to get into the playoffs with of course this season of course he's coming off of two back-to-back -back wins in real life i am recording this um i would say about five four or five hours after the real life cup race at michigan thought it was a great race honestly for michigan standards uh, for both days now as a caution is actually uh going to come out with 31 laps to go ty gibbs elliot chastain larson and suarez both track house cars in the top five right now nobody's going to come to the pits aside from uh uh, Michael McDowell, Brennan Poole, uh, Austin Hill, as well as it was actually McDowell that brought out the caution. He blew a rear tire and goes crashing. So it makes sense for the 34, of course, to be coming into the pit lane. But let me know what you thought about the Real Life Cup race at Michigan. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, just like how I thought Pocono was probably the best Pocono race I've ever watched in my life there a couple weeks ago for a trunk that usually sucks. Uh, Michigan, similar feelings. I thought the racing was really good. However, it kind of had vibes of the old uh, 550 horsepower package where it's so hard to pass the leader sometimes. Uh, but there was some really good racing scattered in between that kind of made up for it for me. Uh, and Daniel Suarez got P6, so I was pretty happy about that as well. But we're focused back in on the race here. Now Gibbs out in front over Chastain uh, as well. You got Suarez, Elliott, Larson all up there in the mix. We have run, you know, in this 20 years so place area all race long I feel like we've had more pace than that all race long as we're going to get a bit of a Darlington stripe right there but we just haven't been able to get the position I need a long green flag run to really do something here in Darlington because I feel like the restarts have not been in our favor tonight we've been kind of going backwards there into the side of the 14 and Bowman's going to drive right through us and Threeney's going to continue to just bulldoze through us what in the world is the 48 doing now as we continue on down this front straightaway? Wasn't very impressed with the 48 just going Bodo's mode with an opportunity now on lap 68 as we head down into turn one. And I was looking to immediately repay the favor here and here's an opportunity we're going to use up the 48 on the exit in turn two but too much we've wrecked ourselves into the inside while around we go the caution's going to fly. I am so sorry I'm such an idiot. What the f was that? Yeah that was stupid. I was trying to use up the 48. And I wrecked myself big time. We have 16 seconds of repairs. Everybody would end up pitting. Uh, but if you've been watching NASCAR Heat 5 Cream Mode in the past, we have a rule system where uh, basically a certain amount of seconds of repairs results in two laps lost. Well, 16 seconds would cost me one lap of track time. So we would re-enter the track one lap down. However, basically how we're going to run it from here on out is I've done a little bit of uh, background testing. Uh, so 
I originally was doing 10 to 20 seconds was one lap, 20 to 25 was two laps, and 25 and above, we would call it a DNF. However, it's going to be changed. So 10 to 15 seconds will be one lap of repairs. 15 or 16 to 20 uh, will be two laps, and then 21 and above will be a DNF. Do this because I'd like to add a form of realism to the series because I shouldn't be able to hit the wall head on on the inside at 150 miles per hour and maintain track position and continue on and, and go for a, a good result. So that's why we do that. We've done that in the past. We're doing that here in the future. But there's a guideline to go off of what I gave you right there uh, from starting basically next episode going forward. Uh, but yeah, that ruined our race because we're down in 34th. We are in the Lucky Dog position. We were only uh, battling one car for the Lucky Dog. Uh, that was Todd Gilliland, who I was able to pass. Uh, and now we're, we're just hoping for the caution to come out but it wasn't coming out. Uh, Chase Elliott was leading the way, and here I was up the inside again of Alex Bowman. And, I mean, look at the pace we have. Uh, we were fighting with these guys, and myself and Bowman would continue to scrap it out. But this was, you know, 18th place on the circuit, at least here now, as we would continue on. We clear the 48, but it wasn't over. He would actually get back to my inside down this front straightaway towards turn one. He would pass me back. Elliott approaching just three laps to go, looking like we are probably going to end this under green flag conditions with a pretty lengthy green flag run. Uh, just unfortunate because I was a lap down uh, after wrecking myself. Elliot, approaching the final uh, few moments. We're going to try and get clear of the 17. Yes, we will clear. Uh, not for position, obviously, at this point now, but just hanging on for the heck of it. Now, is actually getting to the outside wall as Elliot starts the final lap, so Bowman's going to get clear. We stay in front of the 17 there, but Chase Elliot on the final lap here in Darlington. He comes through one and two down the back straightaway momentarily, but it looks like nobody's going to have anything for him so he's going to get a second win of the season and that just made it a lot easier race is going to finish under caution it was actually for chastain who crashed on the final lap uh so he would lose some positions because of that you can kind of see him there he is right there briefly uh we end up p31 some cars pitted towards the end which allowed us to get that 31st position but yeah i mean talk about blowing some points away that's going to make a big difference late in the season elliot larson gibbs blaney bell your top five a great day for both gibbs and reddick who needed it truex of course could have had a great night uh ends up not getting it as you see the trucks and xfinity standings as well the cup series would be on your screen but really disappointed in myself obviously because i screwed up royally there and just blew away uh you know potentially 15 or so points instead of running about that 20th maybe up to 17th we end up 31st uh and you'll see the playoff grid here on the cup series in just a second uh and see the kind of effect that has and there it is with 35 points out of the playoffs. Uh, two behind Briscoe, five ahead of Cindric. Haley, our teammate, 18 out. Uh, Busher out by 12 uh, of his teammate and boss of Brad Kozlowski. Billy Herbst, of course, a big question mark around him as he is trying to get into that top 30 in the standings. And that's where it's interesting. So we'll take a look here in just a second at his situation. Uh, because obviously, if he's in the top 30, that puts him back in the playoffs. And that would, of course, bump everybody down uh, by one position and theoretically make it harder for me to get in. So uh, let's go very quickly, take a look at that. There you see Gibbs up to 24th, Reddick to 29th, but Herbst not in the top 30, obviously. He is down in 33rd place right now, uh, and he has about 40 or so points to make up to get into the top 30. So he's got some work to do. Bowman, understandably, mad at us after uh, what happened in Darlington. It is what it is. In the next one, we head to the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coke 600. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, everybody.